Devrim. I'm Stephen Ben Danoon with the Noon Institute of Biblical Research, and a privilege to get to come and speak with you guys today. And this message, I know, will be a blessing to my Christian friends, uh, but I really pray that it will also help open the eyes of the Jewish brothers and sisters that I have all over the world. May it be something that will cause them to really think and reconsider who the Messiah really is and, who, and his identity that has been hidden throughout the scriptures, through the writings of Moses and the prophets, and has been revealed in the last days that we live in through his son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> anyway, maybe a little bit of an odd way to, pres to start this off, but uh, I want to take and, and, and share with you some in some incredible, incredible mysteries that God has revealed to me over the last year or so that is the identity of the Messiah, the identity of Yeshua and who He is, as well as I want to reveal to you something that He recently showed me, an incredible, incredible mystery that He has given me that I think will be a blessing to you. And as well, uh, it's what caused me to, to, to look back and say, let's re, re, refresh some of the other ones that he's given me as well that were very similar. Some of the simple revelations, like when I took you to the Pool of Bethsaida in Israel, in Jerusalem there, and shared with you the incredible miracle that happened there when Jesus, Jesus told the blind man to go wash his eyes. Now I'm going to take with you and I want to walk you through things. But I, I, I thought it would be really important, though, because sometimes some of the Christian friends I have that uh, perhaps don't quite have the same revelation that I do on uh, the identity of Yeshua, I thought I would first set a little stage for you, taking you to the Christian New Testament in Colossians 1.14, beginning there uh, through verse 17. It says, In whom we have redemption through His blood, speaking of Jesus, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of of the invisible God. I want to just pause for a moment and let that part sink in pretty deep there. He's the image of the invisible God. As many would say, God the Father. The firstborn of every creature. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Him and for Him. Also in Ephesians 3.9, it says, To make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Also in John 16, verse 27, for the Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. First uh, Corinthians 8, 6. But to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things. Now notice how he says that. The Father of whom are all things. And we in Him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by Him. The of and the by are different, because the of represents birth. It represents the begotten Son. In this case here, all things are by Christ, because He's created everything. From the very beginning of time, He created the heavens, the earth, the earth, and everything. But when it says it is of Him then we know that it's because the source of our Savior is the invisible God. And Christ is in the image of the invisible God. He is the expression of God Himself. And this, perhaps, is where most people miss the mystery of this incredible revelation. Let's go back. I want to take you first to Genesis and... This is where we will actually begin at. I'm sorry. Yeah, in, in Genesis. Because what we're going to do now, remember, we have established that all things 
according to 1 Colossians 1.16, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. That is, by Jesus Christ, all things are created. Well, let's just see how that works out. In Genesis 1.27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he male and female created he them. So Jesus is the God that created man, clearly because all things are created by him, both visible and invisible. It also says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 4, when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. By the way, the word Lord there is God's divine name, Hashem, or Yahweh, as many people call today. So therefore, he must be this Yahweh, because all things were created by him, both heavens and earth, visible and invisible. It says in Psalm 148, verse 5, Let them praise the name of the Lord. There again, God's divine name. For he commanded, and they were created. Isaiah 42, 5, Thus saith the Lord, again, God's divine name, Yahweh, He that created the heavens and stretched them out, He that spread forth the earth and that which cometh out of it, He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. Again, this scripture has to apply to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because why? For by Him were all things created, and that are in heaven, and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Well, that's including everything, including Adam. Okay, so keep that in mind. Isaiah 45, 18, For thus saith the Lord, again, God's divine name, that created the heavens, God Himself that formed the earth and made it, He that established it, He created it, not in vain, He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord. Hashem, that is, Yahweh, that is, and there is none else. But you have to keep in mind, this is not the invisible God. This is Christ himself. Let's take a look at something else that Jesus said, Yeshua, that is. In John chapter 8, verse 54, Jesus answered. He says, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me of whom you say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I have known him. And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar likened unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it, and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? The one that Abraham saw, according to Moses' own writing, were when the three strangers came to him. And the one, of course, that stayed with Abraham, that revealed the secrets of his heart, was none other than Yahweh, as Moses wrote his name. And Jesus said he saw his day and was glad. Well, notice what else he said. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was... I am. Yichaye. He is now declaring to be the very one that was speaking to Moses at the burning bush. This is when God said, Yichaye asha Yichaye. I am that I am. Interesting, isn't it? So, Yeshua, I brought this up because I wanted to show you that he claimed to be there. But again, as we can see what Jesus says, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me. He was born of God. And He came to this world revealing the very invisible God to us. Because if God is invisible, then God cannot be seen. And clearly, there is not a single scripture that shows us that God would ever be visible in that regards. So, kind of makes it a little interesting, doesn't it? Let's continue on. Um, so he says here, um, in light of these things here, now would like to take, and I want to look at some hidden points that Jesus made that demonstrated who he is, or who he, who he is, who he was, etc. If we go to, um, this is the new one that the Lord recently revealed to me. This is in 2 
Chronicles chapter 20 in verse 7. Are not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? Now, just keep that in mind there and hold that thought there where God says, The seed of Abraham, thy friend forever. Also, in the book of James, in chapter 2, verse 23, it says, And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Now, what I find interesting is that Jesus was always trying to get the Jewish people to realize who he was, who was really in their midst. Because he came as the Son of God, as the Redeemer of the world, it was somewhat of a stumbling stone for him. So he was always giving little clues to who he really was. And here's what he reveals here in John chapter 15, verse 15. He says, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. That's a good one, isn't it? But I have called you friends. For all things I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. You see, that's what it was with God with Abraham. He said when he was speaking to the... Notice this now. When does God reveal this? When does God reveal showing that he is the friend of Abraham? Let's look at that scripture. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 16 is where we find the answer to this. And the men rose up from thence and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to bring them on the way. These are the three strangers that have come with Abraham. And two of those go down into Sodom. We call them strangers because in Hebrew, Melachim, or the, or the uh, angels that are there, you could also refer to it that, but it's also the word for messengers. And the, verse 17 is what's really interesting. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. See, God says, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Now, he was a friend with God, and he wasn't going to hide from Abraham what he intended to do. So again, looking at that scripture right there that we were looking at just a moment ago, when he says to him, henceforth I call you not, this is Jesus speaking, <clears throat> servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. See, the God of heaven, that was actually God's divine name written in there. Yahweh. And he said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I am going to do? And he reveals to Abraham what he's going to do. That's what made Abraham a friend to God. And Jesus, again, revealing the very nature of Almighty God, says to them, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Isn't that fascinating? Incredible, incredible revelation. I mean, I just love it. Another one that was really astounding that the Lord revealed to me sometime a couple of years back or whatever it was, was when I was reading in John chapter 1, verse 1. Now, <clears throat> keep in mind, I know a lot of oneness quote this scripture. And they do have some interesting revelation. But the problem is, is they also apply Jesus as being the invisible God. And that's not right. That's where a lot of the Trinitarians have the right idea, but they don't have the revelation necessarily that, I shouldn't say all of them don't, because there's many Trinitarians that do have the revelation that Jesus Christ is, or Jehovah of the Old Testament, is Jesus of the New. Or Yahweh, I hate that word Jehovah, I just can't stand it because it's completely not correct there. But anyway, so what, what I, the point I want to make here is that the Hashem, the, God's divine name of the Old Testament, is actually applied to Jesus of the New. 
A lot of Trinitarians realize that. I've spoken to many that have that revelation. And the oneness people do realize that as well. But the problem is, is they don't recognize that Jesus actually comes from the invisible God. And where did he, where did he begin? This is what helps answer these questions here. Where did Jesus... Now, Jesus doesn't have a beginning per se... Because he was in God to start with. He never had a beginning, never will he have an end. He is an eternal being. But in order for God to have fellowship with his creation here on earth, he brought the Logos, he birthed the Logos, we should say. God birthed a portion of his, of his own self and brought it into this world. And this is where we see with John having one of the, to me, one of the greatest revelations of this. He says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Again, identifying that the Word is the Creator, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. In Him was life. This is important. Don't miss this. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, back when God first began to deal with me on this, I immediately looked at this, and I said, John's talking about in the beginning. This is Baal in Hebrew. Baal at the first, or at the beginning. This, he's speaking of what, you know, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I'm thinking to myself, literally, what is the first word that God speaks in Genesis? So I went back, and I began to read. And as I began to read, I actually started in the very first verse here. Still, God has not literally spoke yet in the first two verses. But in verse 3, it says, Ve'yomer Elohim. That means, and God, He said. Ve'yomer Elohim. Yahior. Ve'yahior. He said, and you, you translate this, let there be light. It is, it is eternity coming into existence in a dimension in which you live in. Okay, that's what it really is. Yahiyod. It's not let there be. It is eternity coming into existence right before whoever would be there's eyes. It says the Yahiyod. And the light, the eternity was, the light was eternity. It was eternity now here. You see, because why? God wanted to be able to, to fellowship with his creation. Not to mention, God was bringing forth the light in order to do the creation. Mm. Interesting, isn't it? Oh my gosh, blessed be the Lord. Now, then of course it says, Ve'yore Elohim et ha'or, and God saw the light, kitov, that it was good. Ve'yavdil Elohim ben ha'or uven ha'choshek, and God put a firmament between the light and the darkness. See, because the, the darkness, why? He said the darkness could not comprehend the light. He had to put something to separate between the two because Satan represented the darkness. Now, I say that because I wanted you to be able to see this, that the light, of, see, because he says, in him was life. Now think about that. See, in the very beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. And of course, in the beginning, the first Word of God was the light. And in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Really, what is that? What is the light of men? Well, Adam, when he was first created, again, Jesus created him. It says there that God created the man, formed him of the dust of the ground, breathed in his nostrils a breath of life. See, he breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. And that light was the light of men, in him was life. He was the tree of life, the Eitz Chaim. What does Eitz Chaim mean? It literally means what it says, tree of life. But it's God Almighty's life. It is from the divine name of God, Yahweh. It's from His name, that first letter in there. The same thing with the light of men. When Adam was first created, and remember, Eve was in there with him. Because when God says, when He says, Epoch pa'av nishmar chayim, chayim, the plural, the yod mem at the end, He had breathed a plural form of God's own life into Adam, showing that Adam was not alone in there. He was, he was with his wife Eve. 
They were one. And God had to breathe enough life in there for both of them. And of course, God puts Adam into a deep sleep. The first surgery ever done on the earth opens up his side, takes Eve from his side. He doesn't, nowhere do we ever see that God had to breathe into the nostrils of Eve. He doesn't say, Ipak nishmat chayim there. He doesn't say that. He doesn't have to breathe in her nostrils. He breathed it through Adam's when they were one which is a beautiful type of Yeshua as our Messiah. He was the tree of life. Our life, the Holy Spirit that was meant for us, was in Him when He came to this earth in a human body called Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. When Yeshua HaMashiach came to this earth in Him was the life of Almighty God. It is amazing. It was the tree of life. Because that tree of life, that life is the light of men. And what was Adam actually called in the beginning? He wasn't called Adam. Adam was from Adama when he formed him from the dust of the ground. But what was he called? He was actually called Ish. God called him Ish. Aleph Yod Sheen. Incredible word there. And the Yod in the middle of the Aleph and the Sheen there it signifies God's divine name. And again, the Aleph Sheen, Ish, is fire. That is the light of men. In him was life, the Chaim. That was inside of him, and the life was what? It was light. And what was Yeshua in the beginning? He was the light. He was also the life. See? Incredible, incredible. Now watch this here. He was the life. He was the light of men. See? And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And that's what we see in the beginning, the very first thing there. So I, I just love that right there. Now, just to show you that what I'm saying is according to the word of God, if you go to John chapter 8, verse 12, and this is how I know John has such an incredible revelation. I also notice in verse 5, first, sorry, chapter 1, verse 5, it says, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That's where I told you in Hebrew, he separated, he put it, uvein ivdel. He, uh, he had to put a separation between light and darkness. And John chapter 8, verse 12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. Imagine that. Now, Jesus, Yeshua here, is identifying himself as the light. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Wow. You see, if you do not have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you, you do not have, you will not in no way whatsoever have eternal life. You will have darkness. And the darkness will separate away. The word that I bring to you, it is the words of life. I bring to you Yeshua and His true identity and who He is. And the only ones, there's a lot of people, let me just say this before I move on. There's a lot of people out there and I know there's a lot of Catholic people out there that are coming in pretending to be evangelicals, pretending to bash the Catholic Church, but they don't reveal their names. A lot of them, they just don't reveal their names. They, they don't want you to really know who they are. And they're trying to slam down this ministry and say, well, Steve is, uh, I forget even what the word is they use, a, a mod, mo, modelist, mobilist, whatever it is. You know, he doesn't believe this and he doesn't believe that. And you know what? The sad thing is they have no idea. They really don't have any idea, and it's really sad. But that's Satan. You see, Satan is against the Word of God. And what I tell you is right from His Word. What I'm sharing with you is what God is going to reveal to Israel. This I do know. And I know you guys are a blessing to us tremendously. And that's what we're trying to do is be a blessing to you. So you can see what Israel will soon see. They will recognize Jesus Christ to be the Messiah. Yeshua HaMashiach. They will call him Yeshua because Hebrew is their language. It won't be long. You'll actually hear messages in Hebrew with subtitles in English. I pray God gives me the time to do all that too. So anyway, so he says that uh, Jesus says in uh, John 8, 12, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Absolutely. God is so incredible. Okay. Um, also in Exodus 17, 5, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go on before the people and take with thee of the elders of Israel. 
We're going to be looking now at the rock. Who is the rock? And we want to look at that as another incredible mystery that God revealed to me. I'm, I'm not going to go into the depth of how deep this is because it's a very deep revelation. But God said to Moses, and a lot of, a lot of uh, Christian scholars knew this already, Christian believers. I shouldn't just say scholars. I, I have a lot of respect for the average Christian that has the Holy Spirit that knows God. I love that more than anything. In fact, that's greater than the scholar, if you ask me. But he says, Go on before the people, and take with thee the elders of Israel, and thy rod wherewith thou smotest the river, and take in thine hand, and go. Isn't it interesting that he tells him to take the rod that he smote the river with? He's not talking about the Red Sea. Why did he smite the river with his rod? When he smote the river, the water turned to blood. Do you know that that was also a type of Christ being smitten? That when he was smitten, the rivers of life would pour blood instead of water. Because that water of life would come through the blood of Jesus Christ. Everything that God does has a significance. And this is why God specifically tells him to take the rod that you smote the river with. Because, see, Christ is the river of life. He is the waters, the fountain of water of life. Those that would believe on Him from their belly shall flow rivers of living water. And when He would be struck, the river would have both blood and water that would come from His side. So when Moses smote the water, it was showing that when the Redeemer, when Christ would be smitten, that river of water, of life, would come by the way of the blood. So anyway, he says to him, take, that, take, his, take, take his rod with him. He says, Behold, I will stand before thee. Excuse me, take, take in thy hand and go. And behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock in Horeb, and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of, uh, of the elders of Israel. And why does he do this in front of the elders of Israel? Because it was the elders of Israel that in the future God knew that they were going to condemn Yeshua. They were going to judge him. They were going to, as the question came at Meribah, is God with us or not? The, the scripture literally says, and he called the name of the place Masa and Meribah because the chiding of the children of Israel because they tempted the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? And when Yeshua was here, he was Hashem. He was Yahweh in flesh as the son of Almighty God, the very God that Moses saw. Remember, how can, God, how can Moses see an invisible God? He couldn't see the Father in that regard. There's no way because God's invisible. God even said to him, he's invisible. But Moses gets to see the back part of a man. What is that? That was Yeshua before he became in a man. His, what would you call that? Eternal body. He saw the back part of a man. See, because he is the image of the invisible God. So the only thing Moses could have saw was Christ. And he bore record on Mount Transfiguration when he stood with him there. Oh my gosh, what an incredible, incredible, beautiful word of God this is. So they, they were tempting the Lord, saying, is the Lord among us or not? Same thing the elders of Israel would do 1,500 years later when Christ come. They couldn't believe that it was Him. They didn't Because why? He's in a human body. How can God be a man, as Rabbi Singer always says? How can God be a man? You see, the problem is, is the Jewish people never recognized God to begin with. You know, there are some that did. I'm not saying that they didn't, but I'm talking about in the time when Messiah was here. Even there, there was just a remnant. A remnant believed him. They did believe. They did recognize him. So anyway, he had him smite the rock that it bring forth its water. And when it did, it, it came out the waters. And even though they complained and questioned whether or not it was God, if they didn't drink the water, they would perish. And it's the same today. If you do not believe that Yeshua is the Messiah and drink that water from His fountain except His blood, the water, the same rod that smote the river that turned it to blood, if you don't accept the blood of Christ as your own token, you'll die in your sins. Now see, He covered Israel 
the remnant that is of Israel that would believe until their time. All right, but now let's watch and let's see what happens here. What's really beautiful about this right here. Now, Yeshua, when he was on Calvary and they smote him, they pierced his hands and his feet. As Zechariah 12 says, they will look upon him. Uh, the rabbis often say that it says that he's thrust through. Yes, he was thrust through. He's thrust through with a spear by the Romans. That's when the water and the blood come from his side. That's why God specifically tells Moses, take the rod that you smote the river with. Because why? Both water and blood would come from that rock. And that rock is Christ. See, let's look at some scriptures on this. Deuteronomy 32.3 says, Because I will publish the name of the Lord. I love this. Moses says, I will publish the name of the Lord. You know, his divine name is not known. And he said to God in Exodus chapter 3, They will say to me, Mashimo, what is his name? He says, What do I tell them? God says, Say, I am, I am that has sent me to you. But his divine name, the name, and see, they never asked Moses back then what was God's name. But today the Jews will ask that because it's a name that has been hidden for, for 2,000 years now because of what happened. And the re one, there's two reasons why the name was hidden. One, it was hidden because Yeshua was now the name of salvation. Because the way God brought the Lamb of God for sacrifice for sins, that was the way of salvation. But isn't it funny how God says in His Word, though, that when Israel is encamped about with armies, in that day He will restore a pure language that everyone might be able to call upon the name of Yahweh, but not the, the correct way, not the way I'm saying it, Hashem. They'll be able to call on that name. Why not Yeshua at that time? Because redemption will have been completed. Once redemption is completed, God, His name that He had to start with is back in effect. When Israel's sins are forgiven, the iniquity is no more. The meditorial work of Yeshua is over and His name comes back to being the divine name of God that we may call upon His divine name. This is when the restoration of His divine name comes. Mm. So anyway, it says, Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. Who is the rock? The Lord. What Lord? Oh, that's God's divine name again. Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, however you want to say it. That's His name. He is the rock, according to Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 3 and 4. His work is perfect for all His ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is He. Hmm. Well, how does that work then with 1 Corinthians 10, 4? And did all drink, Paul says, and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Notice how Paul doesn't say the Lord Jesus Christ. He just says Christ. He's applying it, though, to the Lord Jesus. But he specifically doesn't use the name Jesus. Why? Because God is now in a human body. The Son of God is the Savior to the world. Now remember, it's not the same as the invisible God. He's the image of the invisible God who we call the Father. So, it's just amazing to me. Let me share with you some more here. It says in John chapter 7, verse 38, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath saith, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they believe on him, should receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. He had not been smitten yet. See, inside of Yeshua, inside of him, was the Eitz Chaim, was the tree of life. Jesus even said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Interesting, isn't it? The way to the tree of life had been guarded. Isn't that what the scripture said when God drove him out of the garden? The way to the tree of life had been guarded. He says, I am that way. I am the truth. You want to know what the truth is? He is that truth. I am the life. He is the Eitz Chaim. He is the tree of life. He's already told you who he is. Incredible. 
Genesis 2, 7, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. See? Oh, blessed. That's the Holy Spirit was being breathed into Adam. And Eve had it. That's, see, it's interesting. God breathed one time. Adam and Eve both got the Holy Spirit at the same time. So when she was separated from his side, being birthed out, she didn't have to have the Holy Spirit breathing in her. She was already filled with the Holy Spirit. And by the way, if you hear men speaking harshly against women and stuff, I guarantee you one thing. That is a Masonic doctrine. They, Masons believe the Jesuits believe that woman was created by the devil. That is a Masonic doctrine. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. That's what Jesus said himself. He is the light. When he had, put, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground. This is another incredible revelation that the Lord revealed to me. This is when I went down to the pool uh, of... Uh, of uh, uh, Salome, uh, there in Jerusalem. And I went down to that pool not too long ago, and I sat there where the blind man, where Jesus taught him to go wash. And when he washed, he received his sight. And he ran back, and he told the, uh, the rabbis, and they said, Who give thee thy sight? He says, I don't know. But the man that put clay on my eyes, made clay and put it on my eyes, the same man told me to wash, and now I do see. Everyone knew he'd been born blind. And his mother and his father testified that it was true too. But watch what Jesus does when he goes to do this. Again, he was showing a sign that he was the God in the Garden of Eden. Watch what he says. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made the clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. How did God form Adam? Did he not form him from the dust of the ground? See, when Yeshua was putting that clay on his eyes, he didn't do it because he had to. He was showing he was the same God. Because clearly the Bible said all things were created by Christ. And there's nothing both visible or invisible that he didn't make. So he again was showing that he was there in the beginning, forming Adam from the dust of the earth. And now he was forming clay. He was forming his eyes or whatever it was that he had missing there that he needed. He was showing that he was still the creator in the very beginning. Now I'm going to share one more with you, one I've shared before, but this is another one that just really blesses my heart. And I just want to first take you back. Well, let me take you first to Matthew 14, 25. And the fourth watch of the night... Jesus, of course, by the way, had already sent his disciples away, and then he comes walking on the water. Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea, the Sea of Galilee. Beautiful place. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out of fear. You know what's interesting is that Peter said, Lord, if it be you, bid me come to you on the water. And Jesus, Yeshua himself, he said, Come. And he got down and he began to walk. But then he got his eyes on the things of the world, the waves. And then he began to sink. See, if the Spirit of God dwells in you, it'll quicken your mortal body. Notice what he said in Genesis. This is another thing that made, should have made them realize who it was that was in their presence. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Merchafet is like a brooding or a hovering over the water. You see, in the beginning, when he was creating, the same way he did on the Sea of Galilee, he did over the whole earth. You know, the Lord Jesus, Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach, He's an incredible, incredible God. And I have to say, like so many times, the apostles always say, I thank God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. 
because he come from the Father. But it was him all the way down through. This is what the Jews have missed all along. This is where they get confused because there's so many different doctrines in Christianity. But it won't be long. God will send two witnesses and they'll straighten it all out for them. Let's pray that God will do that for them. They need it. In fact, it's interesting, the Bible says that ten men of the nations or of the Gentiles will take the hold of a skirt of a Jew and say, we've heard the Lord is with you. Teach us your ways. I've always said, if the Gentiles grab a hold of the skirt of the Jews and say, we hear the Lord's with you, teach us your ways, I thought that Christianity already had everything. I think the reason they do that, though, is because when the two witnesses come, they get rid of all the scruples that are in there. All the things that got kind of twisted up over the years. You see, the Lord has some wonderful Christians all over the world, just like you guys that are listening now. Truly anointed and love the Lord and believe Him with all their hearts. And even you guys, you write me all the time. What about this? What about that doctrine? I may not have all the answers myself, but I understand how you feel. There's a lot of mixed up doctrines of every kind of, kind of belief you can think of. I wonder why. Ten men of the nations will take the hold of the skirt of one Jew and say, show us your ways. We hear the Lord is with you. That'll certainly be a wonderful day. Myself, I can't wait for it to happen. Maybe it'll help put the rest a lot of these things. But then again, I have a feeling because we know the Pope will hate them. The Antichrist will sit there and rise up and he'll do great miracles and signs just like the during the day of Pharaoh when his little magicians did all these incredible signs in front of Moses. They will do it as well. So it won't be everyone that recognizes who they are, but for those that do, you'll be able to see the Word of God in its purest form, as if it was in the time Jesus himself walked on the earth. Shalom and God bless you. I'm Stephen Benoon, watching the Noon Institute of Biblical Research.